today I'm going to show you how to make your time lapse look like this instead of looking like this. So are you ready? Let's get started. So how does all of this work? I always thought when you do the time lapse here, let's say this is your print. When you do the time lapse, uh, the normal way is you see your bed going back and forth and your x axis going back and forth. It's just at a higher speed. I always thought that you just had to increase the speed until this nozzle just stayed still and everything raised up on its own, which I was completely wrong. So this is how it works. For most DSLRs out there, uh, you'll have a remote like this, uh, or not this particular remote, but you'll have a remote where once you push the button, um, the DSLR takes a picture. So this is all done with pictures. It's not actually done with video. So the way it's set up is, let's say this is your print and you're printing it, right? So once you print it, after each layer, the x-axis moves over where it taps into that button. And when it pushes that button, what happens is the camera takes a picture. And then it comes back and it does its regular print, however it does. And then it goes back after the next layer and it hits the button. Now normally there's like a little finger pointer that's like this. So when it touches it, it pushes the button and then it comes back and it just repeats the process, you know, and moves back and forth, does the next layer and then so on and so on and so forth. So now that we know how everything works, next you need to figure out what kind of mount are you going to be using because all of this is going to require a mount. So regardless if you're using a GoPro, an iPhone, which I'm going to be using, or a DSLR. It's your preference. All you're doing is taking pictures at this point. So based on the remote size and the compatibility of everything, uh, you will be printing mounts according to that. So I'm going to be using this mount today because this one actually works with the headsets that's connected to the iPhone. So this piece right here will actually sit right there. And for those of you that, that don't know, if this wire is connected to the phone, and you push this button it will actually take a picture so this is what I'm gonna be using this is my setup right here uh, if you have a GoPro with the wireless remote great if you have a DSLR with a wireless remote that's great there's many other options out there uh, these are some of the things that you might need with some of the other ones based on the remote and this is something definitely you're all gonna need if you're not using the setup I'm using which is technically called a poker. So how this thing's gonna work is this one's made actually fairly simple. So this one's just gonna sit and clamp right onto the hot end right there. So you can see it's right there. And you're gonna have a mount at the edge. So as this goes through, that poker is actually gonna hit the button and the button is what's actually going to take the picture. So you're gonna have something right here and this is gonna come in, picture, go back picture go back but for me I don't need the poker because the way this is set up once I have everything mounted and this is there once it comes in it's actually just gonna touch the button by itself so I don't need a poker but you might if you're using some kind of a remote either wired or wireless uh, just by the way I got this on Amazon for three dollars this will work with anything that has Bluetooth so I used it for my phone because Eventually for long prints, I'm going to have to plug this into the charger overnight so it keeps constantly taking the pictures and that's why I got this. But because we're just going to do a small print for the test, I'm going to go ahead and use this. The easiest way to mount this, I've noticed, is you got to take these two screws out right here. Once you do that, just pop this into place like so. As you can see, it's actually a pretty good fit. It goes right in there pretty smooth. Then we're going to take the screw and just put it in the last hole and you'll notice it'll come out on this side. Okay, now we're gonna take the centric nut. Or I keep calling it centric nut, but it's not, it's just a regular. Take that, twist it on. This is gonna be a tight fit. So just make sure everything is long ways like so. Once you have it on there, both centric nuts, what you're gonna do is just take the pulley or the tensioner, put the belt on there and slide it in. And then pull it out as much as you can because you still want that belt to be pretty tight. And there you go. Things pretty solid. Now we can go and install 
the remote so for me I'm actually going to be using the headset like I said with the that comes with the iPhones and all I gotta do is place it in right here okay and once I place it I'm gonna go ahead and check to make sure that this is actually gonna hit it so it is and I'm gonna keep it right there now to make sure that this does not fall off I'm just gonna get to take a regular old zip tie alright what you wanna do now is go ahead and auto home everything so you can get the right numbers for the next step so for the next part what we're gonna basically do is try to move the x-axis to a point where it actually touches that button and presses it so the camera takes a picture all right so here i'm going to be in photo mode but i am recording my screen so you guys can see so all i'm going to do is go down to prepare move access and i'm going to click on move x so i'm going to do 10 at a time <laughs> Okay, now that I'm very close, I'm going to go ahead and do one at a time. So that's seven, eight. And then at eight, you notice that my screen flashed, so it took a picture at eight. I'm going to go back to seven, do eight again. You see, it took a picture. So now I know that my X axis, in order to reach the button, is at 308. Okay? Now what we're going to try to do is move the y-axis the reason we're going to move the y-axis is because you want to position it to where you actually want to take the pictures so we're just going to keep moving it so i would recommend placing your camera like i have right now and then zoom in to where you want all right so let's say if i want the print to be there so let's say this is my print. The x-axis is going to be here printing, right? And once it's done printing, it's going to go to the right and take a picture for me. Now, I don't want to do the time lapse here. What I want to do is every time this moves over, I want the x-axis to move over as well. So you get a better view of the 3D print. And then I wanted to take the picture. So once it does that, then the the y-axis is going to move back, the x-axis is going to come back continue printing and as this goes to the right the y is going to come up and take pictures here so everything is going to be stationary. So now that we know what our x and y values are going to be we need to go and open up Cura and add this on there. What you're going to do is once you open up Cura you're going to click on extensions you're going to go to post processing then you're going to go to modify g-code. Once you do that right here you're going to do add a script scroll down to where it says search and replace once you do that you'll notice you'll get a little window on the right hand side now I made this pretty easy for you guys uh, all you gotta do is copy it it'll be in the description section down below so under search which is the first one right here just go ahead and highlight this and copy it and once you copy it just go ahead and paste it right in here now to for replace this is where we're gonna enter our values okay so if you go down here, 300, that's basically going to be your x-axis maximum that your printer is capable of. So for the CR10S, it's 300 by 300 by 400. So this one right here, I'm going to put 300. If you have an ender, I believe it's like 220 or 210. Um, depending on your printer, you're going to enter the maximum Y build volume that your printer is capable of. Okay, So you're going to enter that here. And here, for your Y, uh, like I discussed, I'm going to enter 200. That's basically how much the bed is going to come forward when it takes a picture. And then the poke right here in the next line, the 309 that I put, that is the value that I had uh, where the actual hot end hits the button and takes a picture. And then after that, I moved it 2 millimeters to the left, which is 309 minus 2, of course, which comes out to 307. And then it's going to pause for 0.5 seconds and it's going to continue the print. So these are the only things you need to change. You need to put the maximum X build volume 
Then you need to do Y, basically where the bed's gonna move up to take the picture. And for the X, where it pokes to hit the trigger. Uh, and then minus two, uh, so it moves away from it a little bit. And then after you enter those values in, you're just gonna go ahead and copy all of this and place it in here. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. You go ahead and close this up. And if you wanna check if you did it right again, just go to extension, post processing, modify G code, and you'll see that there's a script already added here, and that's what you entered. All right, guys, so here's the moment of truth. You can see that the printer started, went all the way to the right, and now it's printing the first layer. And once it's done printing the first layer, let's see what actually happens. It's supposed to move back to the right, which I know it does. Um, so you'll see it right here. So slow, slow it down for you. It's going to go, click the button, it's going to take the picture, and then slowly go back to the print. So it looks like everything is working fine. And if everything's working fine, this is the result that you should actually get. All right, so here's the print itself, fairly small, just test printing it. Um, I've noticed even though my retraction settings work when I'm doing a normal print, for this one, um, when you do the time lapse, since it's going back and forth, it gives you like a little porcupine event. As you can see right there, I got stringing like crazy. So of course, it looks like I'm gonna have to work on my retraction settings. Uh, one thing I think is gonna help me is increase the speed to when it goes back to the print. Hopefully that works. I'll keep you guys updated on that. So there you go, guys. Success. It works. I hope you guys have just as much as luck as I do. Well, hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, guys, leave it down below. I'll get back to every single one of you like I normally do. If you're new, consider subscribing to the channel. There's a lot of good information here. And like always, guys, good luck and happy printing.